The submarine is, undeniably, the most formidable threat lurking in the seas. Hidden in the depths and using the ocean itself as its greatest shield, its presence instills such intense uncertainty in the adversary that they are forced to mobilize extensive resources to try to neutralize it. For this reason, the submarine has established itself as the ultimate deterrent weapon, a key piece in global strategies shaped within an essentially defensive context. But where do submarines come from? Who came up with the idea and what were the first models built? That is what you will discover in today's video. The history of the submarine's invention dates back to ancient times, when human fascination with the underwater world was already part of the collective imagination. Over 20 centuries ago, the renowned conqueror Alexander the Great is said to have ventured into the depths of the sea using a rudimentary submersible vessel. According to tradition and artistic depictions created over the centuries, Alexander descended in a large glass container that enabled him to observe the ocean floor. An accomplishment that, though cloaked in legend and interpretation, planted the seeds of humanity's ambition to conquer the deep waters. During the Renaissance, one of history's greatest geniuses, Leonardo da Vinci, was also captivated by the idea of creating a vehicle that could move underwater. His notes and sketches, found in his famous notebooks, revealed designs of a submersible device equipped with mechanisms for covert operation. However, these writings of da Vinci never came to fruition. The first practical drawing of a submarine appeared in 1578 when William Bourne, an English mathematician, published a book outlining his idea for a boat capable of navigating underwater and resurfacing. His concept included some features of modern submarines, such as a simple mechanical means to vary the vessel's total weight and air renewal tubes, although there was no recorded mention of propulsion or purpose. The actual development of the first submarine prototypes, however, gained momentum only in the 17th century with the work of inventors like Cornelius van Drebbel. A Dutch engineer in the service of the English crown, Drebbel is widely credited with building the first operational submarine in history. In 1620, he designed a vessel made of wood covered with leather, capable of submerging and navigating at a modest depth in the Thames River, propelled by oars and kept submerged with the help of air tubes. This innovation, though limited in range and functionality, proved that the idea of navigating below the surface was possible and sparked interest in underwater exploration as both a military and scientific tool. Recently, a team of inventors hired by the British broadcaster BBC made a replica of Drebbel's submarine. The device was successfully tested and is currently on display at Heron Square in southwest London. Of course, considering the pressure at the ocean floor, relying on a leather submarine would be unsafe for the crew. And this was precisely the contribution of the French priest and mathematician Maran Mersenne in 1634. According to Father Mersenne, to withstand water pressure, a submarine should be cylindrical in shape and made of copper, and it should have pointed ends to avoid the need for a 180-degree turn to change direction. The invention of Cornelius Drebbel and the writings of thinkers like Father Mersenne and others paved the way for new attempts to improve underwater navigation, but it would still take nearly two centuries for a submarine to be effectively used in a military operation. In the 18th century, American inventor David Bushnell made a significant step forward with the creation of a barrel-shaped submarine called Turtle. Designed in 1775 during the American Revolutionary War, the Turtle was powered by a hand-cranked propeller and could carry a single person. Bushnell's intention was to use the submarine to attach explosives to the underside of British ships. An ingenious idea that, although it did not achieve the expected success in battle, represented an important milestone in the evolution of submarine design and functionality. Over the decades, other inventors continued to refine Bushnell's concept. At the beginning of the 19th century, Robert Fulton, an engineer from New York working for France, designed a submarine called Nautilus. Unlike its predecessors, the Nautilus featured significant technological advances, such as a sail-powered propulsion system when on the surface, and a hand-cranked propeller when submerged. Despite its effectiveness demonstrated in tests, the navies of the time remained skeptical about the strategic potential of the submarine, and Fulton's project was not adopted. But a few decades later, submarines began to attract military attention on a broader scale. During the American Civil War, the need for wartime innovations led to the construction of the H.L. Hunley, a Confederate submarine that made history as the first submersible vessel to successfully sink an enemy ship. 
In 1864, the Hunley used a spar torpedo to attack the frigate USS Housatonic, which sank following the explosion. However, the victory came at a high cost. The Hunley was also lost in the attack, sinking with its entire crew. This tragedy highlighted the technical and safety challenges involved in the use of submarines, but did not prevent further advancements. Over the years, the world witnessed a revolution in underwater engineering. Submarines powered by electric motors and internal combustion engines were developed, allowing for greater autonomy and efficiency of these machines. Inventors like Irish engineer John Philip Holland made decisive contributions to this evolution, introducing hybrid propulsion systems and reinforced hulls that could submerge to greater depths and operate for extended periods. If you're getting captivated by the history of submarines and want to dive even deeper into this fascinating universe, I have an amazing tip for you. In the video description, you'll find some of the best books about submarines ever published. These reads will enrich even more of what we're discussing here. And the best part, by purchasing any of these books, you'll also help me keep bringing more content to the channel. So, don't forget to check it out, and let's continue our journey to the bottom of the sea. The US Navy adopted Holland's designs, finally recognizing the strategic potential of submarines in naval operations. With the advent of the 20th century, the technology and strategic capabilities of submarines began to profoundly influence navies around the world. John Philip Holland, whose initial contributions were fundamental, saw his influence expand as his designs were adopted by military powers. In 1900, the U.S. Navy commissioned the first modern submarine based on his specifications, called the USS Holland, equipped with an internal combustion engine for surface navigation and an electric motor for submerged operations. It represented a new level of efficiency and innovation in naval engineering. In Europe, Germany was also investing heavily in the development of its submarine fleet. World War I became a proving ground for these innovations, and German submarines, known as U-boats, became a feared weapon. Using unconventional warfare tactics, the U-boats were used to attack enemy merchant and military ships, resulting in significant losses and directly impacting crucial supply routes. Germany's unrestricted submarine warfare campaign, which culminated in the sinking of the British ship Lusitania in 1915, generated international outcry and contributed to the United States' entry into the war. Despite the effectiveness of submarines as weapons of war, the technology still had serious limitations. Submarines of that era needed to surface frequently to recharge their batteries, making them vulnerable to attacks. Life on board was extremely difficult, with claustrophobic conditions and poor ventilation, making the physical and psychological endurance of the crew a crucial factor for mission success. The advancements did not cease, and the years between the two world wars were marked by continuous improvements in propulsion, sonar systems, and weaponry. With the outbreak of World War II, submarines took on an even more central role. Germany, once again, stood out with its feared U-boat fleets. They led the Battle of the Atlantic, a long and brutal campaign to cut off the Allies' supply lines. The development of new tactics and the introduction of technologies such as radar and encrypted communication codes, like the Enigma Code, increased the lethality and effectiveness of the U-boats. However, Allied advancements in detection and counterattack technology eventually balanced the battlefield, leading to heavy losses for the German fleet. During this same period, other powers such as the United States and the United Kingdom advanced in submarine technology, developing vessels that were faster, safer, and more autonomous. The use of submarines in the Pacific War by the US proved equally decisive, with successful attacks on Japanese warships and supply vessels contributing to the isolation of Axis forces. With the end of World War II, advances in submarine technology did not stop. The Cold War brought a new era of development, driven by the rivalry between superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. The most significant innovation of this period was the introduction of nuclear propulsion. The advent of nuclear reactors meant that submarines could operate submerged for weeks or even months without needing to surface to recharge batteries. This transformed naval strategy, allowing for long-duration missions and greater stealth at sea. In 1954, the United States launched the USS Nautilus, the world's first nuclear-powered submarine. With a reactor that provided virtually unlimited fuel autonomy, the Nautilus symbolized a new era of underwater supremacy. Its ability to remain submerged for extended periods 
revolutionized military operations, and paved the way for new classes of submarines with more sophisticated weaponry, including ballistic missiles. Nuclear submarines quickly became the backbone of the nuclear deterrence strategy of major powers. The introduction of ballistic missile submarines equipped with nuclear warheads consolidated the concept of the nuclear triad, which also included land-based missiles and strategic bombers. This diversification of platforms ensured that a devastating attack could be met with a decisive response, upholding the principle of mutually assured destruction. Ballistic missile submarines, such as the Ohio class of the United States and the Typhoon class of the Soviet Union, were true underwater fortresses, designed to patrol the ocean depths and remain out of detection range. Nevertheless, the arms race and political tensions of the Cold War were not limited to the military field. Technologies developed for military submarines were also applied to civilian and scientific models. Research submarines, such as the Alvin, were created to explore the oceans at depths never before reached. In 1966, Alvin made history by locating a lost hydrogen bomb in the Mediterranean Sea after an air accident, demonstrating the practical capability and strategic importance of submarines in operations beyond warfare. Over the following decades, advancements continued. Improvements in sonar systems, engine silencing, and stealth technology made submarines stealthier than ever. Today, modern submarines incorporate artificial intelligence, advanced navigation systems, and are an integral part of the navies of more than 40 countries. Cutting-edge models, such as the U.S. Virginia-class attack submarines and Russia's Boré-class nuclear submarines, reflect the state-of-the-art in terms of combat and operational capability. In addition, there are also the submarines for tourism. Many were shocked when one of them, the Titan, from the company OceanGate, suffered an implosion. The accident, which occurred in June 2023, claimed the lives of the five passengers on board. Still, few people know that since the 1980s, companies have been successfully offering submarine tours. The oldest of these is Atlantis Submarines, whose fleet operates in Hawaii, the Caribbean, and Guam. Sailing at depths of up to 40 meters, where sunlight still penetrates, the company's fleet has transported 11 million tourists since it was established in 1986. Now thank you for the company, and keep the suggestion of this other video here on the channel. I believe you will like it.